<laughs> While the constellations are Greek and Roman, the names are Arabic, all right? And the list just goes on and on and on and on. And so where does this come from? How does, how do, how do you get us, how does this happen? How do you get stars named with Arabic names? How does this happen? And it happens because, of course, because, hang on, just catching up with myself here. Okay, it happens because there was this particularly fertile period that um, Professor Weinberg duly discussed. Um, and around that period, that 300 year period, the intellectual center of the world was Baghdad. Baghdad. It was completely open to all visitors, all travelers, Jews, Christians, uh, doubters, which today we might call atheists. They were all there exchanging ideas, all of them, all of them. And it was that period where you had the advances in like engineering and, and biology and medicine and, and, and mathematics, all right? Our numerals are called what? Arabic numerals. They ever stop and think about that? You know, who's, who, as in, in America, do we pause, take pause at this? Why are they called Arabic numerals? Okay, they fully exploit the, the discovery of the zero, create a whole field called algebra, itself an Arabic word. Algorithm is an Arabic word. All this is going on, and it's all traceable, not to some long thousand-year tradition in, the, in Islam. It's traceable to this 300-year period. This 300-year period. And then, so they had naming rights. The most expensive, beautifully uh, carved astrolabes come out of this period. There's a great collection of these at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, if you ever want to check them out. So navigation, celestial navigation, all of this is traceable to this period. And so something happened. And what happened, as was previously described, I was told, and I give, forgive me for repeating from what you might have heard, 12th century kicks in, and then you get the influence of this scholar, Al-Ghazali. All right? And so, so out of his work, you get the philosophy that mathematics is the work of the devil. And nothing good can come of that philosophy. That combined with other sort of codification, philosophical codifications of what Islam would, was and would become, the entire intellectual foundation of that enterprise collapsed, and it has not recovered since. Over that period, all these books were translated into Arabic on a scale not seen since then. And so, so, so why, why, why am I even going here? Because I'm trying to explain to you that the, you fast forward, the, the dangers here is that what, you fast forward to 21st century America and ask, what influences do we, are we feeling now? Because that, peri that naming period in Islam stopped and, and it never recovered because the, 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 the way of thinking about the natural world, revelation replaced investigation, okay? So I fast forward to 20, 21st century, and what do you find? You get things like this, okay? This is in America, <laughs> all right? So now, what I find interesting is, is the, it's a level of passion that it requires to actually do it. You gotta like pay for this, okay? <laughs> and it means a lot of people are pissed off at the Big Bang. They're pissed off at the Big Bang. At, at our museum in New York, the American Museum of Natural History, they come to the Big Bang exhibit and sometimes I don't feel like having that conversation. I say, why don't you go to our hall of human biology first and then come to us? And that's where we have sort of monkeys holding hands with people in skeleton forms and then they never make it back to the Big Bang. <laughs> They're gone forever, <laughs> okay? So however egregious the Big Bang is, monkeys and people is a, is, a worse agree, is, a, is a worse transgression, apparently. So there's that, but there's also, uh, here's a little bit of intelligent design here. Here's one that, that is, wants to accept the science, but then is like what's before the Big Bang. We don't quite know yet, so God was there. So, so of course, intelligent design is basically a god of the gaps.